Hi everyone, welcome to the first video in my current liabilities lecture series. Um, something interesting about this lecture series, I'll tell you right up front, is that a lot of the things that we're gonna cover are things that you've already seen before because current liabilities are so common that they've come up in situations where we've dealt with inventory sales, where we've dealt with adjusting journal entries, and so forth and so on. And so um, a lot of this will be, to some extent, recap. And, and with that in mind, I won't ha uh, harp on the issues that are recap um, for great lengths of time, but it does not hurt to, to have a reminder as we, as we enter now the liabilities um, section of, of, of this course to, to maybe just go back and visit some of the liabilities we've seen before. And then on the tail end, we actually will see some new ones, all right? But for now, this video is focused on accounts payable and unearned revenue, two liabilities we have definitely seen before. But let's go ahead and dive in, talk about them a little bit, and just remind ourselves about some of the details. All right, first up, an overview. It is the first video. So until before we get into to accounts payable, let's let's just kind of take a moment and ask ourselves, what exactly was a liability again? And what exactly is a current liability again? Um, liabilities are obligations, okay? It's an obligation that a company needs to fulfill, that they owe to another party. Um, that obligation could be monetary. That obligation could be in the form of some action. Current liabilities specifically are obligations that will be fulfilled within one year or one operating cycle. Again, for simplicity, you've seen this phrase before, one year, one operating cycle. For simplicity in an introductory course, we're just gonna leave it at one year, right? That'll be our cutoff of whether you're current or you're non-current. And so some of the common ones that we're gonna see, accounts payable when you, you know, owe money to your suppliers, basically, usually that's within a year. Notes payable could be current or long-term, but the current portion goes under current liabilities. A slew of other payables, interest payable, taxes payable, salaries payable, so forth and so on. Um, if you recall way, 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 way back when I first introduced you to types of accounts and we went through, oh, here's some common revenues and expenses and assets and liabilities. When we spoke about liabilities, I said pretty much anything, and there are exceptions, but pretty much anything that can be an expense can be a liability if it simply hasn't been paid yet. Um, and so there's a slew of just miscellaneous liabilities. And then of course our unearned revenues are definitely a liability. Unearned revenues is where we owe, let's say a service or a product instead of uh, money to, to somebody. And so that's, that's just kind of the brief overview to bring us back in the right frame of mind of, okay, we're moving from the asset side of the balance sheet, which was the, the last lecture series to now the liability side where, where we owe instead of we own. Now I mentioned first up in this lecture is accounts payable. Um, accounts payable is, is typically how we record um, uh, agreements between us and our suppliers. And that agreement is, is essentially to pay a certain amount of money. Um, and that money is in exchange for some economic transaction that took place. Um, it's almost always current because supplier relations, you don't typically buy supplies and then uh, uh, not pay for them for over a year. And when I, I'm saying supplies in a loose sense here, I don't literally mean the account supplies. I mean um, inventory supplies, the things you need to run your day-to-day -day business or things you need to resell to your customers, so forth and so on. Um, two journal entries are involved with accounts payable in general. First up is the economic activity itself. When you um, purchase uh, 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 inventory, let's say, uh, from one of your suppliers and you don't pay for it, debit inventory, credit accounts payable, right? That creates the payable. And then the second journal entry is when you pay it off. Now, that payment might be in full, that payment might be partial, that payment might be discounted depending on the terms of the original economic transaction. You might remember discounting from way back when we talked about the um, uh, accounting for, for inventory purchases. Um, and so that's accounts payable in a nutshell. Nothing new, we've seen it all before. All right, just to remind us from, from say, a, a how to do the problem standpoint, let's look at an example of accounts payable. On November 1st, Flyer Corps purchased $10,000 worth of supplies on account, terms 1 slash 10, net 30. 
on November 10th, which is nine days later. Flyer Corps paid for the supplies it purchased in full. Record the journal entries for the purchase and payment of supplies. So these are kind of the two journal entries that we, we spoke of. Um, all right, so when you buy, so November 1st, um, we purchased $10,000 worth of supplies on account. We would debit supplies and we would credit accounts payable because we owe $10,000. And essentially, we're, we're done. That's what that journal entry says, bought supplies on account. Um, then November 10th rolls around. All right, November 10th, it says we paid for the supplies we purchased in full. But keep in mind, we did have some discount terms on this arrangement. Those terms, if you forget how to read them, were um, you get a discount, I say A is in the first number, if paid within B days, that's their second number, and then the net balance, or the N, is due within the next number of days, in this case 30 days. Okay, so that's how you read that. So in this case, if we paid within 10 days, which we did, we would receive a 1% discount. All right, so how do we record that? Well, remember, we are paying off the full liability. So that account payable is going to go away. But we are not paying the full amount in cash. So while the account payable is going to be a credit to 10000 to make it go away, this is just going to offset the account payable that we originally created. We're only paying 99% of that in cash. So we, we think about our 10000 we get a 1% discount, right? So times 1%, and that's going to be $100. And so that's the discount we get to take, which means the cash we're going to pay, or the credit to cash, will only be 9900 And then, of course, we have to record that $100 discount to something. Um, now, we've never dealt with this in class about what if you get a discount on supplies, but let's do kind of an analogy to what if you would bought inventory. And, and Remember, inventory has multiple systems, periodic systems, perpetual systems, and these things work differently depending on what system you're in. But the more common one that you see in today's world is a, is a perpetual system. And when you buy inventory and then you later get a discount on it, you have to remove that value from the inventory because that's not what you paid for it, right? The same logic could be applied here to supplies. We bought $10,000 worth of supplies originally, but we only ended up paying $9,900. And so right now, if we were to look at the supplies ledger, we have them recorded at 10,000. But that's not really what we're paying. And so the discount is going to be credited to supplies. That way, as a result, if we look at our, our supplies ledger, you've got the debit to 10,000, you've got a credit of 100, which puts our supplies at an ending balance of 9,900, which is exactly what we paid for them. So that's more in line with, with, with how accounting should go, right? Whatever you actually incurred as an expenditure, that's what the thing should be valued at. Um, and, and that's it, that's accounts payable. Again, nothing really new here, you've seen it all before. All right, unearned revenue, another one that you've seen before, but let's go ahead and just recap it for the sake of, of argument. Um, unearned revenue is when you collect a cash advance from a customer and you still owe them something for that cash advance. And that could be a product, that could be a service. Usually we refer to it in terms of services because that's where it's most common. You, you owe them, say, uh, 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 mowing their lawn. You owe them a consulting session. Um, but it could be a product of some type. Maybe you owe them um, a monthly magazine subscription. That's a product, not a service, right? And so there's various ways you could, you could think of this. But of course, again, there's basically two components to these transactions. The first is when you collect the cash advance from the customer. The second is when you fulfill your obligation and you get to record revenue for fulfilling your obligation. Um, and I have a note here before we look at the example, unearned revenue versus prepaid expense. I always like to remind students, whenever we see one of these two terms, remember, these are the um, uh, opposite sides of the same coin. If you receive money in advance for something you haven't done yet, that's a liability called unearned revenue. If you 
pay money in advance to someone for something you haven't gotten yet, that's a that's a, 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 a an asset called a prepaid expense. Usually we replace the word expense with whatever that thing is, prepaid rent, prepaid insurance, prepaid legal services, so forth and so on. So these are just two sides of the same coin. All right, again, an example, just to make sure that we remember how to do this. Um, on June 17th, Flyer Corps receives a $900 cash advance from a customer for three consulting service sessions to be performed, one each in July, August, and September. Flyer Corps fulfills the first session on July 9th and closes its books on July 31st. Remember, typically when it comes to these kind of prepaid things, um, we end up recording the fulfillment as part of adjusting entries. We kind of look and see, oh, what do we have outstanding um, from a fulfillment standpoint? Have we fulfilled any of it? Um, and so here it asks us to record the journal entry for the cash advance and then the subsequent adjusting journal entry for completing that first session. So on June 17th, when we receive the cash advance, that's debit cash, it's $900. And of course, since we haven't fulfilled anything, we owe them three consulting sessions, we're gonna say unearned. Now you could just put unearned revenue. Um, if we wanted to be more specific, we say unearned service revenue, because that's what it is in this case, $900. And so that takes care of the cash advance itself. Then it asks us, what's the adjusting entry look like? Well, on July 31st, we close our books. And we look back and we say, well, did we complete any of these consulting sessions? And we look and we say, yeah, sure enough, we completed one of them on July 9th. Now, because we only completed one, we've got to figure out how much of this liability is attributable to that one completed. And barring no other details, you assume it's an equal distribution. Now, if there's other details telling you otherwise, follow those details. But in this case, we would say there are, we had a $900 obligation over three consulting sessions, which means it's $300 per session. Which means when we have performed the first session and we go to recognize that, we are going to reduce our liability under in service rev by that 300 bucks, by the amount of that one consulting session. And because we have done the job, not only do we take the liability down, but now we get to record revenue because we have fulfilled the obligation. We have earned our revenue for that $300. And of course, that's still gonna leave a liability of 600 on our books. And when we do the second session, we'll take 300 more off. When we do the final session, we'll take the final 300 off and ultimately resulting in revenue of 900. Um, but that, that requires the passage of time and requires us to do the other portions of the job before that can take place. That's it. So again, I said, you know, I'm not gonna spend too much time harping on things that we have done before. And other than our kind of brief overview there, uh, everything in here is, is stuff you've seen before, um, um, whether it be in, in inventory transactions, whether it be in, in adjusting entries, you've dealt with this. And so um, it, this was just a refresher. If, if you found yourself struggling with the refresher, go back and check out those original topics um, where, where we first learned these ideas. Um, but that's it for this video. I'm gonna talk about a couple more current liabilities in the next video. Again, probably mostly recap, and then we'll enter new territory after that. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found it helpful. Hope you have a great day.